Now one of the questions that many of us would like to ask in life is in the things that happen in my life, in the plans and the purposes that God has for my life, in the things that God wants to see fulfilled in my life, do I have a role to play? Do I have a responsibility in seeing those things happen in my life? Because on the one hand, we talk about, you know, God is in control. We say God is an omnipotent God. God is a sovereign God. God is an all-powerful God. And, you know, He does what He pleases, the Bible tells us. And, and all of that is true. God is an omnipotent God. God is a powerful God. And God is a sovereign God. And, and, uh, and so the question that we try to re we wrestle with is, do I have a role to play? Do I have a part to play in what happens or what does not happen in my life? Either way, am I in some way responsible for the things that do happen or the things that fail to happen in my life? The answer to that question is a very, very clear yes. You and I are responsible for what happens in our lives. God has his part, he has his role, but you and I are also responsible. The Bible calls us co-workers with God. We are joint heirs with God. We have a very important role to play. And that's why we have been taught to pray. Uh, we have been taught to have uh, uh, do, do certain things. That's why God has given us his word. So the answer to the question, do I have a role to play in what happens or what does not happen in my life? The answer is an obvious yes. So in the things that we, we are responsible for, one of the most important things and probably high in this list is our call to live and walk by faith. And so I'm going to spend some time here this morning and hopefully some weeks to come, going to spend some time just talking about what it means to live by faith and and what it means, what are the, how do we operate by faith? How do we live by faith? What are the principles of faith that we are supposed to be exercising and walking in? So we're going to spend some time talking about faith and living by faith. Now, if the moment we say we're going to talk about faith, I think some of us would say, oh, oh, I've heard it so many times. <laughs> Especially if you've been here, you've heard us talk about faith and teach about faith so many times. And that's why... I first want us to go to Hebrews chapter 2 and read verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2 and we'll read verse 1. It says here in Hebrews 2 verse 1, Therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. Or the King James says, We must give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we let them slip from our lives. You know, so we've heard this before about faith, but we must keep hearing it and give it more careful attention. Give the more careful attention to the things that we have already heard, lest we drift away from that. And so this whole message on faith and walking by faith and what, how do we operate by faith and how do we live by faith is, is a call for us to give careful attention to some of the things that we may have already had. Amen? So please don't tune off this morning and say, oh no, it's just talking about faith again. There we go again. No, don't tune. Tell, tell your neighbor, don't tune off. All right? Pay careful attention. To the things that we have heard, lest we at any time let them slip or that we slip away from the teaching and the walking and the call to walk by faith. Let's go to Romans chapter 1 and verse, verse 17. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. Many of the verses of scripture that we're going to be reading this morning are familiar verses to us. But I believe that as we just look at them afresh. There will be new insights that we gain, new understanding established in our hearts concerning our walk of faith. In Romans chapter 1 verse 17, the apostle Paul writes this. He says, for in it, that is in the gospel, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So he's saying, listen, in the gospel, God's righteousness has been revealed to us. 
And he says, you know, here's the one important statement that comes to us through the gospel. And it's simply this, that the just shall live by faith. Let's say it together. The just shall live by faith. The just, what does it mean? It means people who've been made right with God. So the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ has come to us and has enabled us through our believing and receiving Christ to come into a place where we are in a right relationship with God. But the day you stepped into a right relationship with God, the day you became just, God also said, from this day, you are going to live by faith. Amen? The just will live by faith, meaning everything you and I do in life, we are called, God has told us, He says, I want you to do it by faith. You know, there are things that we can do with our natural abilities. Things that we can do with our mind. But God says, I want you to operate, to live by faith. All the other words of scripture that you and I are familiar with in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter and the 7th verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. You and I are familiar with it. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Let's say it together. We walk by faith and not by sight. So the Bible says that you and I as believers, we walk by faith. Our life in this world is by faith in God and not by sight. Meaning, you know, we have our sight. We have the ability to look at circumstances and situations in the natural, but we make a choice to live and operate by faith. Faith is a choice. And God says, I want you to live by faith. You operate your life by faith. You carry out your life on this earth by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. I always have the option of operating by sight. Operating by my abilities, operating by my reason. But God says, I want you to choose faith. Choose to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The day you entered into a right relationship with God, that was the beginning of your journey of walking by faith in God. Everything you do in life must be birthed by faith. You might say, you know, I'm just a student. Well, do your studies by faith. And that doesn't mean you close your book and say, you know. What I'm saying is, Pursue your goals by faith. We will talk about it in a little bit. You say, but I'm a, you know, I'm a businessman. I'm a professional. I work for XYZ company. Whatever you do, do it by faith in God. The force behind everything you do, what energizes you, what motivates you, is that faith in God because you are living by faith. Amen? Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. We'll spend a few moments there in Hebrews chapter 11. We will read verse 6 first. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. It says here, But without faith, It is impossible to please God. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. Let's say it together. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that's how important faith is. You see, you and I, we want to please God. And the Bible says that aside from faith, apart from faith, Apart from living and operating by faith, we cannot please God. Meaning, anything I do outside of faith, without faith, and there's a lot that you and I can do without faith. If I don't do it motivated, inspired, energized by faith, it is not pleasing to God. So what do you mean? If I do my ministry, if I do my work, my job, my life on this earth, if I conduct, conduct it, carry it out without faith, God says, it's not pleasing. That's what the Bible says. Amen? Without faith, 
It is impossible to please God. You want to be pleasing to God. You want to live a life that pleases God. Then your life, my life, has to be a, has to be a life that is energized. That, is, that springs out of our faith in God. Meaning everything you do must be birthed out of faith in God. If you are pursuing a dream, you're pursuing a goal. And you're doing it simply because you have faith in God. You know, God is pleased with that. In your natural, you, you know, there is no logical reason why you should be pursuing that goal. Why you should be pursuing that dream. But you're doing it because of your faith in God. And when you are living life like that, the Bible says it pleases God. Because you can just turn this verse around to say that faith pleases God. So let's say it in the, Af in the, in the positive way. Faith pleases God. Let's say it together. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, simply meaning that if you are living by faith, you're operating by faith, you are pleasing to God. Faith pleases God. When you're stepping out on something which you know that, hey, I've never done this before and it's highly likely I'm going to fail, but I'm doing it because God said, because I have faith in God, then I want you to know that that does please God. God's excited about it. He's happy about it. When you launch out, when you do something because of faith. Faith pleases God. The Bible continues in verse 6. What kind of faith must you have? But without faith it is impossible to please God. But he who comes to God must do things. Must believe that he is. That means he exists. And number 2. That he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God's a reward. God's into rewards. Amen. You know, sometimes we think this reward system. No, no, no. I'll just serve God. I don't want any rewards. Excuse me. God's a rewarder. Amen. Don't be shy to ask for rewards. He is a rewarder. That's part of his system. That's part of who God is. That he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So because of your faith, you're willing to be diligent in your pursuit of God, in your pursuit of His call, in your pursuit of what He's asked you to do. And, and if you are diligent, the Bible says there's a reward waiting for you. God's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Amen. Say, Pastor, I'm putting some energy, I'm putting my, some effort into my seeking. God, is it going to be worth it? Yes, it is. Have faith. That God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. As you pursue in God, through all the ups and downs of life, through all the difficulties of life, there is a reward. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Amen. So faith is important. We are called to live by faith. God says, I want you to live by faith rather than by your sight. And He says, when you walk by faith, it absolutely pleases me. I'm excited to see my children, my young ones, step out in faith. It excites God. It pleases the heart of God when you and I walk by faith. So now let's try to understand what faith is. So go back to verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to read verses 1, 2, and 3. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1, 2, and 3. And again, these are very familiar verses to us. Verse 1 says, Now... Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. They got a good report card from God. Now God is giving you a report card. He gives it to you with all A's. Why? Because you had faith. By faith they obtained a good report. Verse 3, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word... Sorry, my page... By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible or that the things which are seen came out of what was invisible. But let's try to understand verse 1. Faith is, so this is the Bible definition of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Things you're hoping for. What do you desire? What is your expectation? Things you're hoping for are things that are still in your future. 
Because if you have it, you don't hope for it. If you have it, there's no need to desire for it. You already have it. So things hope for, things that are out in your future, for your life, for your career, for your marriage, for your home, for your children, for your profession. It's all there. What are the things you're hoping for, desiring for? I hope all of us have things that we're hoping for. Amen? Otherwise, life may not be a whole lot worth living. God wants you to desire. Jesus said, whatever you desire, you've got to have a desire that's going to motivate you to get there. So there are things that you're hoping for. And so the Bible says that faith is the substance of these things that you're hoping for. Things that are out there in your future, they're not in your present. And faith is the substance of those things. The word substance in the Greek has two meanings and I'll, I'll just deal with one. It literally means the title deed. Faith is the title deed of things you're hoping for, things you're desiring for. What's a title deed? When you buy a car or vehicle or when you buy a home, you get a piece of paper that says this vehicle Registration number so and so and so and so belongs to so and so. Or this home, this property belongs to so and so. That's the title D. It's the proof of ownership. So the Bible is telling you and me that faith is the title deed of things you're hoping for, things you're desiring for. It's your proof of ownership. It's your ownership of what is still out in your future. Are you with me? So there are things that are still out in your future. There are expectations. Things that you're hoping for. Things you're dreaming about. Things that you're desiring for to happen in your life. In your marriage. In your home. In your, in your circumstance. In your finances. In your profession. There are things you're desiring for. And what is it that will bring it to you? It is your faith. It is your faith that is the title lead. It is a faith, your faith that says that is mine. It must come to me. But the day you let go of your faith, you are letting go of your title deed. You're letting go of your ownership of that which is in your future. So you don't want to let go of your faith. Because that is your title deed. That is your proof of ownership. That is what will bring the things that you are desiring for, things that you're longing for, things that you're looking out for. That faith is what will bring that into your life. Jesus put it like this when, uh, when there was a blind man and he came to Jesus and he said, you know, what would you that I do for you? He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. I'm sure this was not the first time he had that desire. Maybe from the time he was born, he had a desire in his heart. I hope one day I can get my sight back so I can see what the world would look like. Uh, but that day was his day when he stood before Jesus and, and Jesus asked him in Matthew chapter 9, what would you do that I, for you? And he said, Lord, that I might receive my sight and Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to do this? He said, yes, Lord. And this was Jesus' response in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 29. He said, according to your faith, be it to you. Let's say it together. According to your faith, be it to you. Meaning your faith will bring your desired outcome into your life. Because your faith is the title deed. Your faith is the proof of ownership that that which is in your future is yours. And Jesus says, here's the equation. According to your faith, be it done for you. And that's a law in the realm of the spirit. Meaning, if you have faith, that which you're hoping for will come to you. He put it like this to the centurion. The centurion came not on his, his behalf. He came on the behalf in Matthew chapter 8. He came on behalf of his servant who was sick at home. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And he said, Lord, you don't even have to come. Just say the word. That's enough. Just say the word. And Jesus said, I haven't seen such great faith. No, not even among all the Jewish people. I haven't seen such faith. Here's a Gentile, a centurion, a Roman who's demonstrating such great faith. And Jesus said this to him in Matthew 8 and verse 13. He said, as you have believed, so be it done for you. As you have believed, what is that faith inside you? His faith was, Jesus, if you say it, 
my servant will be healed and Jesus said as you have believed be it done for you your faith is that proof of ownership and what you have faith for will come in to your life as you have believed be it done for you amen faith is the substance it's the title deed it's the proof of ownership of things you're desiring for you may be a young person and you have dreams in your life this is where i want to go this is what i want to become the first thing you need is not your college degree the first thing you need is to have faith in god learn the principles of faith so pay careful attention to what i'm saying this morning you need to know how to operate faith in god because it is your faith that will get your desired outcome into your life. Amen. You may be an adult and you too have dreams. You, you profess on your home, your family, your marriage. There are things that you're desiring for. Faith is the proof of ownership. Faith is the title deed of things hoped for. And the law is, according to your faith, it will be done for you. Nothing, no man, no devil can stop it. That's the law of faith. Amen. And Hebrews 11 verse 1 continues. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. It is the evidence. Literally meaning conviction. It is the conviction. It is the assurance. Of things not seen, of unseen realities. The Amplified Bible puts it this way. Faith perceives as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Let's say it together. Faith perceives as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. In other words, you ask your senses, is it there? Your senses will say, it is not there. But your faith says, it is. Faith perceives as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Faith is the conviction of things, uh, is a conviction of things not seen, of unseen realities. It is not yet tangible in the natural realm, but your faith is able to embrace it. And your faith says, it is there. That's what God wants us to live by. I want you to live by faith. I want you to live by this, this, this faith which is your title deed of what is out in your future. I want you to live by this conviction of unseen realities. Your natural eyes can't see it. Your ears can't hear it. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. Your logic can't, your logic can't get a grip around it. But you're still convinced about it. And that's how God says, I want my people to live. I want my people to live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. So when you make decisions, when you order your life, you're ordering your life by your conviction of unseen realities. And so people look at you and say, you're strange. You're weird. Because they don't see what you can see. Because you're natural, they see with the natural eyes, but you're seeing by the eyes of faith. And you're guiding your decisions, your choices, your pursuits. Not by what you're seeing, but, what you, but by what you're convinced about. And faith is the conviction of unseen realities. Amen. However, faith is not wishful thinking. And we get accused of that. You people of faith, man, you are... In a realm of wishful thinking. Faith is not wishful thinking. Faith is not presumption. Faith is not just I, I hope it will happen. Faith is solid. It's rock solid. When you understand what is the foundation of faith. The foundation of our faith is the word of God. Is the word of God. You and I are familiar with this verse, but let's go there. Romans, the 10th chapter and the 17th verse. You probably knew that. Romans chapter 10. 
and verse 17 the apostle paul writes here in romans chapter 10 and verse 17 he says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god or he says faith simply put faith comes by hearing the word in other words faith has a very very solid foundation it is the word of god it is what god has spoken which forms the basis for us to have faith for us to have this title deed of things we are hoping for for us to have a conviction of what is still unseen why can we have that kind of faith? Why can we have a title deed of what's still out there? Why couldn't, can we have a conviction of what is still unseen? Because of the word God has spoken and our God is a God who cannot lie. Our God is a God whom the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he spoken and shall he not do it? Hath he said and shall he not make it good? So that word that promise that God has spoken is the absolute basis for our faith. And that word is unshakable. That word is unchangeable. That word is full of power for, for it to come to pass. So faith is not wishful thinking. Faith that is based on the word of God is absolutely secure. Amen. What has God spoken concerning your life? What are the promises of God concerning your money, concerning your job, concerning your career, concerning your marriage, concerning your home? What has God spoken? Your faith in that is what God wants, is what God is looking for. Now, we must make it absolutely clear that just because you hear the word of God does not mean faith comes automatically. Because many of us sit and hear the word, but then it doesn't affect us a, a bit. It doesn't change us a bit. Why? Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 2. It says, For indeed the gospel was preached to us, as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them. It didn't benefit them. It didn't do them any good. Why? Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. The word preached to them did not do them any good. Why? Because they didn't mix it with faith. They didn't believe that word. So you see, people could be sitting in the same service, they could be hearing the same message. One receives, one says, Wow, that's what I need to hear. Another says, wake me up and it's all over. It's like, what happened? I don't know, but I had a good nap. You know, I feel fresh. Revived. So at least they got revived physically, you know. <laughs> but the word preached, if it is going to do you any good, do me any good, we have to believe that word. We have to look at it and say, God has spoken and I'm embracing that word for my life. That is final authority. It doesn't matter what somebody else says. It doesn't matter what anybody else's opinion there is. God has spoken and I'm giving his word final authority in my life. That's an ear and an amen to his words. And if you and I will receive the word in that manner. Then that word will cause faith, will be the basis, the foundation of our faith. So how you receive the word this morning is very important. How you receive the word every Sunday that you come to church is very important. It's not just how good the preacher is, it's good, it's how, how good your heart is. Amen? It's the same word coming to your heart and mind. But if our heart is like stony ground, if our heart is like full of thorns, if our heart is uh, uh, like full of rocks, that word, it's the same word. It will bless your neighbor. It may not bless you. So how you listen, that's why Jesus said, take heed how you listen. Mark 4. Be careful how you listen because how you listen will affect whether the word is going to produce in your life or not. 
He said, with the same attention, with the same measure that you give to the word, is what you will reap of the word. So take heed how you listen. Amen. So, faith is based on the word of God. It's The word of God is the absolute security for our faith. And yet, I want us to make it very clear that we must embrace the word. It's not enough just to read your Bible. Do you believe the Bible? A lot of theologians read it, tear it upside down, and it doesn't change them a bit. They produce more papers, more books, more articles. It doesn't transform anybody's life. So it's not enough to read the Bible. This, do you embrace what you read? Are you saying, yes, that is the word of God. I'm going to lie my life, my life to it. I embrace it. I believe it. God has spoken. God cannot lie. And when you receive that word, it, in that manner, it will profit you. It will inspire faith in your heart. Amen. Faith is based on the word of God. I want to close with this thought and we will pick this up a couple of Sundays from now and build on it and learn how to operate by faith. I just want us to establish the absolute necessity of living by faith. That God has called us to live by faith. He's called us to walk by faith, not by sight. Without faith, we cannot please God. Anything we do outside of faith doesn't please God. We learned a little bit of what faith is. It is our title deed of what we're looking for. It's the conviction of what we cannot see. Faith is based on the word of God, the absolute unchangeable word. But here's the thing I want us to understand. In Hebrews 11 verse 3, which we just read, it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen did not come out of what is visible. That means the things which are seen came out of what the unseen. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. The natural came out of the spiritual. Everything that is seen came out of what is not seen. Which means what is not seen is superior to what is seen. What is not seen is a greater reality than what you do see. So when somebody tells you get real, it depends on which world they're referring to. The more real world is the unseen world. So you should ask them, do you want me to get real or get more real? <laughs> if you want me to be real, I live by the natural world. But you want me to be more real, I live by the spiritual world. Because the world of the spirit, the realm of the spirit, is what caused the natural world to come into existence. That which is seen came out of what is not seen. But the unseen material that caused the design, the formation, and the composition of this natural world is the Word of God. By faith we understand that the worlds, the universe, the seen world was framed, was designed and constructed by the Word of God. Everything in the natural was formed out of the Word of God. Amen? Now think about this. The whole universe was designed and formed by the word of God. I want you and I to understand that the word of God also carries the design and the ability to construct everything that God wants for you in your world. Everything that God wants for you in your world, in your marriage, in your home, in your family, in your profession, in your future, that the design for it and the material to construct it is the Word of God. Are you with me so far? For your finances, it's the Word of God. For your future, it's the Word of God. The design and the construction of it is in the Word of God. So here's where here's the role faith plays. Faith causes my world to be conformed to the design of God's words. Faith, faith causes my world to come into alignment with the word of God. Faith causes my experience to be conformed to what God has designed in His Word. His Word is the blueprint of what He wants you to have in this life. For your needs, His Word says, The Lord is your shepherd, you will not be in want. 
For your money, his word says that wealth and riches will be in your house. For the work of your hands, his word says that all the work of your hands will be blessed. For your job and your future, he says you will enjoy the labor of your hands. You will be the head and not the tail. You will be above only and not beneath. His word is the blueprint. His word is the design for what he wants you to have in your life. And it's your faith that's going to take your world and make it conform to His Word. It's, it's your faith that's going to take His Word and cause it to become a reality in your world. You see, if this Bible was just a book from which you and I preached a million sermons, it would be for good for nothing. What's the use of listening to sermons? Feel good and come back next Sunday. Be dep depressed the rest of the week. Come back for another Sunday. My antidepressant is the pastor's sermon. What good is a Bible that you just preach from? But if this Bible is going to be an experience, if every promise is going to become a prophetic fulfillment, if every word that God has spoken becomes a reality, then this Bible is worth reading. Amen. And that is what God wants for you and me. That everything he has spoken in his word, every promise he has given, he wants it to be fulfilled. He doesn't want it just to be underlying the Bible and us preach a million sermons and make everybody feel good. He wants every promise to be fulfilled. But what is it that is going to cause that promise to become a reality? It is your faith. Otherwise, you'll be reading the Bible the rest of your life and not experiencing one bit of it. You might as well read your Reader's Digest or Times of India. But the Bible is God's design for your life. It's His blueprint for everything in your life. And it's your faith that connects His Word to your world. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. My world I want it to be designed and constructed by the Word of God. I don't want my world to be shaped by some other philosophy, some man's idea, some other person's uh, uh, design or some other person's uh, uh, belief of what I can do. I want my world to be designed and formed by what God has said in His Word. For that to happen, I must have faith in His Word. I want to have faith in His Word. That my world begins to slowly conform itself to the design that God has in His Word. So I like, I like to title my message, By Faith Designs. I don't know if is here. By faith, I design my world. Conforming it to the design that's in the Word of God. choice is always us. You can walk by faith or you can walk by sight. If you will walk by faith, you're setting yourself up to say, God, I want my world to become into a design, the design that's in your word. His word promises you amazing things. But faith is